Hello, I'm Henry T. Welcome to KZQ Channel 32, the show we call Be Inspired with Henry T. This is a show about inspiration many times over New Mexico Sportscaster of the Year. Yeah, it's been, it's been a good ride, man. You know, like, that's been good to me. I'll, I'll tell you, the first day that I got elected Secretary of State, my group, the first thing we did was say a prayer right out the door. About people who have overcome great obstacles in life to achieve their dreams. No one's going to give me anything. It's not going to be handed to me on the platter, so anything I have to get, I have to earn it. Who have become role models for others. So when I grew up, I knew that there would be a time that I would have to give back to the community somehow. Those who've gone on to be the best they can be and to inspire. 16,000 people watched Jim Holzman and his Bulldogs win the state championship. This man has been the head coach at Albuquerque High for 22 years. Hello again, I'm Henry T. And welcome to the show that is literally all about inspiration. It's called Be Inspired with Henry T. But it's as you know, watching these shows, I'm the one that gets inspired. And today, we're going to the mountaintop of inspiration because one of the most inspirational people I've ever met is with me today. Her name is Teresa Tapia. And she has so many hats that she wears. She's an author, business manager, She's a coach, and she is the wife of former beloved boxing champion, Johnny Tapia. You wear a lot of hats and have for a long time. It is an honor to have you here today, Teresa. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Wow. You know, with your greatest days in front of you, mm -hmm. I mean, you produce movies, you're writing a book, you're doing all sorts of things. And you did a lot of these things for your husband, Johnny, including managing his career. I don't need any notes. I just know the story. <laughs> it's a very compelling story to me and all of us around the country, around the world. What does the story mean to you? You know, it actually touches my heart that Johnny was such a great inspiration to people and that he still is. I get um, messages daily from people all around the world who say that they have been inspired, that they read about Johnny while they were, it could be incarcerated, it could be that they were sick, um, fighting, whatever obstacle that they were going through at the time. And they said his book brought them so much inspiration or the documentary and what they all got from that was never give up. And that was a message that Johnny really worked hard at delivering to people. I was so fortunate to meet Johnny when I was a boys club director. Yes. Long time ago. We were both kids, really. <laughs> we kind of grew up together. Mm -hmm. And me, the director of the Old Town Boys Club, he hung out there. He hung out a lot at Wells Park most of the time there. Mm -hmm. But I had the opportunity to meet him. And I got to understand him. Yes. And he was a fabulous basketball player ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> with great athleticism. But he found boxing, and he was able to make a living. And then he found you, <laughs> and he was able to have a life. Yes. What a story. It is, and you know, as you pointed out, that basketball was definitely his passion. A lot of people know that, and there's a lot of people that don't. Had he been taller, that's what he would have chosen to do for a living, but because of his height, he was very good at boxing. He excelled at it, and that's why he chose you know, to do something that was his career. But like I said, you would laugh at him. If you asked him about boxing fights or anything on TV, unless it was one of his favorites, he'd sit there and tell you, I don't know, but I'll tell you anything you want to know about basketball. <laughs> so that was Johnny. When you first became acquainted with Johnny, who was he? Where was he? What was his life literally about? Well, that's a loaded question. When I became involved with Johnny, I did not know a lot about him. I you know, grew up in the California area. I moved back to New Mexico. And um, I just had this person that I ran into, which was Johnny, and he just kind of just showed up everywhere all the time and was constantly asking me out. And I was constantly you know, rejecting him because he was not my type. Anyhow, you know, by the time that um, I spent enough time around him at these places, I noticed that he had a good heart. He was very funny, and, you know, I felt very comfortable with him. 
So we went on our first date. Within a couple of weeks, we were married. I did not know a lot of the things that I found out later. I did not know that he had an addiction problem. I did not know that, um, you know, his whole history with the boxing and being kicked out. And, you know, at that time he was living on the streets because of his addiction. And so there was a lot of hurdles that we had to overcome. You ran interference for Johnny with your great business mind, your love for him. Boy, there's two big shields right there that you literally ran interference for Johnny and kept him from the sharks, from mm -hmm. all that exploitation. Do you feel in your heart that you really helped your husband? I believe so. I mean, Johnny and I were pioneers in boxing in a lot of ways because when I met him and, you know, we were married and he made us come back to boxing, at that time, it was so different the way women were treated. You weren't allowed to go into the gym with your husband. You weren't allowed to be present for any type of, you know, publicity, press, you know, conferences, any of that stuff. You were kind of just on the sidelines and you weren't even allowed to see them until after their fight. And that's just the world that I grew up in. But after, you know, he was um, kicked out of New Mexico for some legal problems, we relocated to Big Bear um, because Oscar De La Hoya, who's a great friend of Johnny and I mean a great inspiration to all of us, he actually helped us relocate. And when we went out there, well, Johnny had no manager, he had no trainer, and he said, you know, what am I going to do? We had a great friend of ours, Bob Case, who was Johnny's agent, and this man has been a manager and agent for lots of top stars, actors, and college, you know, football players and basketball players. Anyhow, uh, one of his claims to fame was Mickey Rooney, the great actor. This was Bob Case's claim to fame, one of them. Anyhow, we were all sitting in our living room. It was Johnny, my brother, uh, Robert, and myself, and... You know, we were talking about top ranks putting pressure. You know, Bruce Trampler, Bob Arum, they're calling daily. Johnny has a fight. We need a manager. Because legally, they cannot deal directly with the fighter. And they know that. So they kept on saying, what do we do? What do we do? Well, Bob Case was the one that the light bulb went off. And he said, why doesn't Teresa do it? And Johnny said, because she's a woman. I said, exactly. I'm a, I'm a woman. I don't know anything about boxing. And Bob said, look. You have been through thick and thin. You've locked him up in a, you know, because I did lock him up to get him clean <laughs> in this wrought iron apartment. And um, he says, you did that for two months. He said, you were arrested and charged with something, your first date with Johnny. You know, at your date that you got married, you know, Johnny was, he literally was DOA. You were basically a widow within your first 24 hours and you helped him survive all of that. Who mm. better than to manage this person who you've already been managing in all other aspects? And that's wow. how it all came about. And you have the inside story mm -hmm. to the business of boxing. Boxing itself has a lot of black eyes. You know the history of boxing. <laughs> yes. You know the stories that will break your heart, how boxers were exploited by various people worldwide. And you, with all that knowledge, you didn't let much of that really hit your husband. It were his little demons within the, inside him that really brought him down. But literally, you protected Johnny. I mean, let's, I ask you the question twice now, but you signed some big contracts, big names, big fights, big promoters, but they treated you with a world of respect. Yes. What am I saying? Well, like I said, being the first female uh, manager in boxing, other than Jackie Callan, I should say. Um, at the time, it just wasn't heard of. And you are treated differently being a woman. And I remember my first negotiation was with Bob Arum. I remember, you know, we called him and said, we made up our mind, you know, I'm going to be managing Johnny. Kind of got laughter on the other end. I said, okay, come down to Vegas. So we drive down to Vegas. And I remember, you know, and I was scared. I was like 22 years old at the time. And Bob Arum, I don't know if you know anything about his background, but this guy graduated from Harvard as an, you know, as a law student. And he was a prosecutor in New York. So he's this very intelligent person. So I remember going into his office and Johnny and I had discussed on the way down there, you know, it was always Johnny, my brother and myself. All the way down there, we discussed what he wanted, how he wanted his contract changed. I had already tore apart the old one, looked through it the best I could. I'm not an attorney, so best I could. I said, well, you know, they should do this, they should do that. Anyhow, I remember going in there, nothing prepares you though, nothing. I remember Johnny and my brother sat in the lobby 
I walked in. There's this man who's bigger than life sitting behind his desk, and he has Bruce Trampler, and he has Lee Samuels, and you know a bunch of his people sitting there. And I remember I was shaking. I walked in, and you know, and I, he says, "Okay, well, let's get on to business." Johnny's fighting. He didn't waste any niceties or anything. Johnny's fighting this day. We need to get this out. So here's the contract. And I said, "Well, Bob, you know, this is what we want." And I had a you know, typed out letter of this is what we want to increase, this is how, you know. So I slide it over to him. He looks at it, tosses it aside and says, well, that's nice, but this is what you're getting. Take it or leave it. And I remember sitting there and, you know, I was so intimidated that I said, well, you know, I'll get back to you. And he says, well, don't take too long, you know, and he raises his voice at me and I was just literally shaking. I walk out of his office and I'm you know, I walk to the lobby and we're walking out and Johnny's asking me, did you get what I wanted? And I said, not exactly. He said, well, did you get this? Did you get that? And all my answers were not exactly. And he said, well, what did you get? So I showed him the contract, it's the same one. And he said, so you got me the same contract? And I said, yes. And he said, so then you really don't believe in me like you say you do. It hit me in the heart more than anything anyone could have told me. And that's what did it. I ended up saying, you're right. I marched back in there, threw the contract at Bob and said, we're not taking it. This is what we want. You take it or leave it. Well, he fired us, t threw me out of his office. and But I didn't care. I walked out with my head held up high. And when I walked up to Johnny, Johnny said, um, you know, did you get me? And I said, no. He says, what did you get? And I said, you're fired. But it's okay. I know what I'm doing. And of course, it threw us into this, you know, spiral of being scared because what was his future going to hold? And we drove back. It was the quietest drive ever. But all I can say is three days later, Bob Arum personally came to the house. I got everything I wanted. Not a final lesson learned, though. <laughs> I'll tell you, it didn't. it's not that easy, though. I mean, I did get what I wanted, but it cost me. And it was mistakes that you will learn in boxing not to make again. And so that's kind of what happened. But really, in the long scheme of things, in reality, they respected you. You gained their respect because you didn't go and stumble and kiss their hands for anything they threw at you. You literally said, well, we'll think about it. Mm -hmm. You don't do that very often to a Bob Arum, obviously. Well, actually, I didn't earn the respect that day because Johnny fought three weeks later. As Johnny was getting ready to come out, they come up and hand me a check. When I say they, I mean top rank. And there's minus $50,000. And I'm sitting here looking at it, or I don't remember the exact amount, but it was half of, you know, what we had discussed in his raise. And I remember, Bob, you know, I go to him, I'm like, this isn't right. And he said, so sue me. I will keep you so locked up legally that Johnny will be 80 years old before he's allowed to fight again. He said, welcome to boxing, sweetheart. Those were his words. Wow. And I was just flabbergasted. So after that experience, you know, I told Johnny and he was upset and I said, don't worry. Six weeks later, Johnny had a fight. So we were here and everybody is um, in the background and we never went out. Um, I stopped it. I didn't let Johnny go out. My goodness. What a story. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's a whole lot more to the story. Yes. And we're going to ask Teresa about the personal side. Who inspired her when she was growing up, when she was little Teresa? Mom and dad, family, who were these key people? Because this is a very talented lady to this day. We're gonna find out her personal story when we come back, plus a whole lot more. This is KZQ Channel 32. Stay right there. I'm Henry T. Teresa Tapia is with us today. We've been talking a lot about her business dealings with her husband, getting him protected, arranging the big title fights that he was involved in. Wow, what big responsibility. But before that, Teresa grew up 
inspired. Great student, great daughter. We'll find out that story right now. <laughs> Who inspired you? Give me a handshake for all the stuff you've done. <laughs> Personally, for Johnny, for our city, for our state. Thank you. So this creative person, Teresa Tapia, mm -hmm. going way back, who inspired you to want to be successful? It would be my father. He was very um, inspirational to me, and he was the person that I was raised with. So I wasn't raised with my mom, I was raised with my dad. And my dad taught me from a young age that you respect yourself, you have to learn to depend on yourself. And he just had this whole way of how he wanted me to be structured as a human being, you know, when I grew up. And he did not want me to depend on a, a guy. He did not want me to depend on anyone but myself. So it was actually due to his up, you know, upbringing and the things that he kind of fed me daily of this is how you have to be, that I learned to be the person that I am. And how about your future? I have a strong feeling after visiting with you here for a day that your greatest days are in front of you, <laughs> whether it be producing a movie, being in front of the camera, hosting a show. What are some of your dreams that I'm sure will come true? I'm actually kind of just doing a lot of um, different things right now, as you've spoken about. We are dealing with movies that are on the table. I am writing a book. I am um, negotiating some stuff for our future, for Johnny and for myself and for our children. And of course, I mean, I would love to do more of this type of thing with, you know, people who make it worthwhile. And so um, there's just a lot to look forward to. Kind of have to be a little bit tight-lipped because until things are yeah. out, you know. Can't I... let those secrets out too quickly. <laughs> yes. You know why? Because this business, people are always looking out for that great idea. Mm -hmm. and you may drop them your idea and all of a sudden, there you go, somebody steals your idea. That's yes. just the way this business is, and nobody knows it better than Henry T., but Teresa's caught on very quickly. Yes, unfortunately, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about a movie that will be produced by you and funding underway, trying to find the right actor to, to do the role of the great Johnny Tapia. A mm -hmm. lot of steps that need to be taken before the reality. Yes, there's actually a few movies that are in the works right now that are on the table. And so I'm going to sort through those. I have the meetings coming up in LA actually in about a week or so. And um, it's to decide which direction we want to go in because there's heavy hitters that you know we're dealing with. As, I don't know if you're aware, but Johnny's documentary, Tapia, yes. we had um, 50 Cent and Lou DiBella who were involved in that. And of um, Ed Alcazar was the director on it. It was sold to HBO. And after that documentary was sold to HBO, I was approached by them and they wanted to do a movie, which they have a great idea, which I can't say too much about it. We have five people right now that we've been kind of dealing with. And so 50 Cent's one of them, Lou DiBella, uh, Sean McEwen, who owns um, Baby Boy Productions, and John Papsadero, who is an award-winning uh, casting director. So we have some really big things. But on the flip side, the people that, the original people that did Johnny's documentary are still kind of in the running, I can say, about wanting to do a movie based on Johnny's years. A certain time, like from 1992 to 1996, they want to do a movie just based on those times. So there's a couple of things out there. And, and I'm dealing with a writer who wrote Johnny's book. She's also an award-winning writer wow. who has just proposed to do my movie on Lifetime wow. or on Hallmark because she just had a great successful hit on there. Wow. But this is a whole different angle. So we have a lot of great things in the works. Yeah. You know, Johnny's life was compelling, very interesting. Your personal life, wow. <laughs> How do you measure it? Exciting, dramatic, painful? What are the adjectives All of them. about your life? All of the above. I mean, it's, um, you know, since I met Johnny, things were never boring. And after, unfortunately, after his untimely death, they didn't slow down or nor did they get any duller. I mean, it's still been that type of a roller coaster, you know, ride for myself. And so all I can do is um, you learn 
I had to learn how to do everything without Johnny, and I had to learn how to who's real, who's not, who are the sharks in this world, and who aren't. So you got to learn a lot of things, and it was a very scary world because Johnny was the protector, and then he was gone. And so what do you do? Now you're faced like, you know, this there's like shark frenzy and, and I'm like the bait. <laughs> so there was a lot of things that I've had to learn. And I've, you know, now I'm in a better place, a lot wiser, a lot more wiser than I was, you know, before his death. Wow. Great news. Mm -hmm. Johnny recently was voted by the board of directors of the New Mexico Sports Hall of Fame to be inducted into the New Mexico Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Thank you. What would that mean to Johnny if you were to express that to him today, if he were here hearing that wonderful news? You know, Johnny fought his whole life mostly for his fans. He didn't do it for titles. He didn't do it for recognition. So he probably would be flattered that he was being recognized, but Johnny in true form would give that award to his fans because that's what he was about. He was all about the people that made him and he never forgot them. So I think, like I said, Johnny's been inducted to several Hall of Fames, the Canastota Hall of Fame, which is huge, the most prestigious boxing Hall of Fame that you can ever you know, be a part of. He was inducted last year. Huge turnout, great fan base. Las Vegas Hall of Fame, you know, Nevada, he's been in there. Um, WBC Hall of Fame. And now this is different. It's a sports Hall of Fame, not just boxing. He was in the Las Cruces Boxing mm -hmm. Hall of Fame. Now this is a sports Hall of Fame. And like I said, I can honestly tell you without a doubt, every time that he has been inducted, he would definitely dedicate that to his fans. So many words, so much recognition, so much fanfare. Here is the great Johnny Tapia, mm -hmm. but he stayed so humble. Yes. Maybe the most humility I've ever seen in a famous athlete, correct? I agree. I mean, he people would get starstruck seeing him, and, and Johnny was more taken with the fans because of the way that they treated him. And, you know, he just had such a heart for people. And, you know, whether you loved him or hated him, you have to respect the fact that he did put New Mexico on the map. He loved this town. I mean, Albuquerque was, you couldn't even, I mean, he had it tattooed on him. You can't get any bigger than that. And he fought for his hometown and his home state and his fans here. But he was loved worldwide, but he never forgot where he came from. And he just honored all his fans everywhere. And so if you came up to him, he was more humbled that you took the time to come up to him and ask for a picture. He loved that, and he never tired of it. My goodness. When I think of the two together, you and Johnny, husband mm -hmm. and wife, holding hands, hugging, walking down the street, sitting next to him in the truck or the car, it was truly a love story. Can you take it beyond that? Um, it was definitely a love story, but it had a lot of nightmares in it <laughs> because, as you know, Johnny, I mean, it was um, it was a lot of up and down in it. You know, it was it was a solid love and he had the most loyalty of any person I've ever met. I mean, to this day, there is nothing. His loyalty spoke volumes. And because of his loyalty, I went through um, I was willing to put up with a lot and turn the other cheek with a lot of his, you know, shenanigans out of the ring because, you know, he was a handful. And, um, but that loyalty and that love that he had for me and for my children and the people he loved, you cannot beat that. And that's, I think, what I miss the most. And, uh, you know, just that, just knowing that Protector was there and he would die for us, he'd kill for us, he'd whatever it took. Yeah. If people misunderstood him, what was the biggest misunderstanding of who Johnny truly was? What I want to say before that is, yeah, we heard about the demons mm -hmm. and the drug falls, but he, to me, Johnny wasn't about that. Johnny was with the love, giving to his fans, mm -hmm. being whatever his fans wanted him to be. But he had this weakness, these demons kept bringing him down. How do you represent and describe what I'm saying. You know, I think that 
The people's biggest misconception about Johnny is that he was just this hardcore addict and thug and he had no, you know, no respect for others, but that's not true. Johnny actually loved people wholeheartedly. I mean, he didn't, it didn't matter. He would treat, quick example, an executive at Showtime, Mal Blank, used to sign Johnny's checks. I mean, he's in charge of everything. Well, one day there was a party in his honor. Johnny was outside. There was a homeless man. Johnny was out there eating French fries, giving him money. So this limo dries up. This man steps out and, you know, Johnny waves at him. So we're in the party. Johnny goes and gives him a hug. The man stood up there and he said, I have been truly humbled by this somebody in this room. Well, he brought up Johnny. Johnny didn't even know what he did. And Mal sat there and said, he treated this homeless person outside with the same love and attention he just gave me. There is no phoniness there. This is what people should be about. That's what you call being genuine. That's what a human being is. And he just gave, and I, so I think he said it best. Didn't matter if you were somebody that was perceived on a lower level or a higher level or white collar, blue collar, all that mattered is Johnny loved everybody. Didn't care what your race was, didn't care what your bank status was. In our last 30 seconds, mm -hmm. You know talent when you see it. When you saw your husband fight, how good was Johnny Tapia in the ring? Well, I'm biased, but I think that um, he definitely has went down as one of the greatest, as should be. And there's a lot of hard shoes to fill, but I think Johnny did a pretty good job. So I'm very proud of him. To me, watching my friend Johnny Tapia was watching the most entertaining athlete I personally had ever seen. Do you concur with that? I do, absolutely, 100%. Wow. What a pleasure Thank having you. you with me today, Teresa. Who knows? Maybe she and I will put a project together, <laughs> and everything she touches turns to gold. I need a little bit of that gold. <laughs> Let's make it good, whatever we do. Well, look, I look forward to it. Thank what you. What a pleasure, Teresa. Thank you for having me. Wow. That's inspiring. That is such a compelling dynamite story. And you know what? One thing about it, Johnny always asked people to pray for him, Teresa. Yes. His faith in God, as we close out today, what am I talking about? You know, Johnny used to say that the reason he lived as long as he did was because of the people's prayers, because he was a hardcore Christian. And that's another misconception people, they don't understand that Johnny was a very strong Christian. We both were. We were both reborn Christians. We believed in, you know, fasting, praying. Everything was about, he used to say, I don't care about the people and what they say about me because only God can judge me. And if you hate him, he'd say, you know what? Don't hate me, pray for me. And God bless you. That was his whole thing in life. But he was a very strong Christian. God bless you, Teresa. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Oh, there are stories and there are stories. This one goes to the mountaintop. And tomorrow morning, we'll have another one just like this one. It's about inspiration, people's lives like Teresa and Johnny and you. This is KZQ, Channel 32. See you again tomorrow morning. Thank you. Got a story, don't forget to call me with it, 907 4523, or email originalgameface at gmail.com. It's been great talking with you today, right here on KZQ. Remember, we're on every morning right here. Be inspired with Henry T, 8 o'clock on KZQ, Channel 32.